Well, joining me now is Edvige Jean Francois, award winning Haitian American journalist who has just returned from Haiti. She has covered the country extensively, including during the 2010 earthquake, where she was in the country for more than a month and has continued to cover developments in the country. Edvige, thank you so much for joining us to talk about this devastating story tonight, and welcome to BNC. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Brittany. Yeah, and if you, I mean, as we just heard what Brittany was talking about, it seems like we you really just can't catch a break over in Haiti. And as I just said, one thing after another, authorities are already saying the damage and the devastation is widespread. What are you hearing about the quake so far? Well, uh, it's been reported. It's uh, more than 200 people have been killed. And, uh, and I will not be surprised if the death toll actually goes higher because the last earthquake that you mentioned in 2010 uh, was of a higher magnitude than this one. It was 7.0 magnitude. So I'm expecting actually for uh, to, to hear, unfortunately, even more people uh, having been killed, having been hurt uh, from from the quake. Uh, it's really devastating. It's It's yet another traumatic event for Haiti at an especially difficult time, uh, as you know, in the wake of, of the president having been assassinated uh, a little over a month ago. And Evie, you know, you have an interesting backstory. You mentioned this a moment ago, and so did I, uh, from you covering the earthquake back in Haiti in 2010. And while we know we can't control Mother Nature, no one expected to see the Haitian nation once again rocked by disaster and uh, a more powerful earthquake at that point when you were there. Talk about what you saw then compared to what you're actually seeing today. Well, it's uh, coincidentally, I was there and spent uh, three weeks there recently and have just returned. And so for me to hear my first reaction when I heard about the magnitude, when I, when I heard the, the news this morning, is I can imagine how difficult it may be. The region, you know, the, the, uh, where uh, the quake has hit, it's, it's a region that's been dev devastated before. Uh, Hurricane Matthew did a lot of damage in that region. And uh, the quake uh, from 2010, which decimated um, much of Port-au-Prince, parts of Leogan throughout the country where uh, anywhere from 250,000 to 300,000 people were killed, uh, more than a million people displaced. Uh, and so uh, I, I, some of the horrors you cannot forget. I mean, I remember when I arrived, there were dead bodies everywhere. Uh, at one point, it got so challenging, uh, they had mass graves where people literally were being buried in mass graves and, and uh, people were burning bodies in some instances in their backyards or, or out in the street because there were so many bodies and with the ab ab inability to collect the bodies. And I actually remember standing uh, at one point over a balcony looking at a dump truck uh, just piled with bodies. And mm. I'm hoping that at this time, uh, it's it's not uh, to the same degree, but it was a very, very difficult uh, situation in Haiti. And, uh, you know, the world mobilized to help Haiti and help rebuild. And unfortunately, uh, some of the promises never came to the fore. Uh, there was failures uh, on the part of the Haitian government itself, some of the organizations in place to, to, to help Haiti. And uh, it was a time of collective grief for uh, the Haitian people. So when I heard about uh, uh, the quake, it, to me, it was yet another trauma on top of trauma. Uh, as I mentioned, I was there three weeks ago. I did some reporting for the Haitian Times, and I think you've had uh, Gary Pierre, -Pierre the founder, uh, on as well. And, and my reporting was specifically about trauma, where I talked to people not so much about the nuts and bolts of what's happened in the wake of the president being assassinated, but what is it like day in and day out uh, to have these traumatic experiences? So that's one of the things that I focused on when I was there in terms of talking to ordinary Haitians yeah. across all social strata in Haiti. Um, it, it, you know, and just hearing you say body after body, I mean, that had to be one of the most heartbreaking pictures you've ever had in your life. You've seen and over and over again. But I want to ask you this. You know, there are reports that medical students and hospital interns are among those who are trapped underneath building rubble so far. Uh, of course, we mentioned more than 200 people have died, hundreds others injured. Those numbers expected to grow. But do they actually have a strong enough medical staff there right now to meet the needs of those impacted by the quake from what you covered in the past? 
I mean, from, from experience, I can tell you no. And then there's a further challenge of, I got some information today and it's nothing I've vetted that I know for certain that some of the roads where medical aid uh, would be delivered, Haiti has been sectioned off uh, by gangs. So you cannot travel to certain parts of the country. Uh, so in terms of even having access to provide medical help, and I'm not even talking about accessible or inaccessible roads. I'm just talking about the safety and security of, be, of being able to transport aid uh, may be uh, challenging as well. And uh, people being trapped under the rubble, uh, going back from experience of, of what it means. I mean, I recall a number of us uh, on our team, uh, people calling on their cell phones, hoping to hear a ping, hoping to actually uh, be able to extract someone uh, and, and Haitian, the fortitude of Haitian people, the resilience of Haitian people, people were literally uh, with their hands, uh, just pulling out rubble, doing everything they can. So I, I will not be surprised if, even in the wake of not getting ready help uh, or immediate help or accessible help, that people are already taking it upon themselves to do what they can to, to help their loved ones and fellow Haitians. Yeah. Well, Evige, we want to make sure we continue this conversation with you when we return. So stay with us um, and stick around. We have much more on the news in Haiti, this heartbreaking story coming up next in our next block.